this fella here. Very popular back in the day. And because they flash around so much. Oh, got him. Yes. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's unreal. G'day, legends, and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Now, this week, a bit of a special one. We're going spinning for Taylor tomorrow. I'm not just going to be using any old lures. I'm going to be using a 45 year old Taylor lure. Yep, I'm going to be using Late the Great Abu Sobi. Now, this is the first Taylor lure my old man used to use. Uh, he reckons he bought his first one when he was about 14 or 15. Uh, they're 28 grams and they're a spoon lure. They, uh, got a bit of flash and uh, yeah, this is an ancient relic. So I'm gonna go put them to the test, see if they still catch fish. Now there's a lot of new and improved technology out there at the moment. There's poppers, stick baits, chrome slices, all that whiz bang flash stuff. But I'm keen to see if the old gear still works. So join me tomorrow morning. So I go hit the stones and see if we can't spin up a feed. And a quick one before I go, I'll uh, talk about all my gear and rigging and stuff once I get home tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I'd rather do it at home when we've got some nice quiet than out in the rocks when we've got waves crashing in the background. So if you want to hear about Taylor gear and what you need, make sure you stay tuned until after the fishing action. Well, not a bad morning for a spin. Real light winds. Swells a bit up, but uh, that's all right. Chasing a few Taylor. Got on very old school lure. Some of the older guys would know it today. An Abu Toby. This fella here, very popular back in the day. Yeah, great. Great for Taylor. They flutter around and make a whole heap of commotion in the water. Exactly what Taylor likes. A few surfers out. Wonder how many points for one. We've got one little chopper early on. It's actually first cast with the uh, spoon I got him. So a bit of luck with a few more around. Got him. Oh, it's only a little chopper. Only a little tucker. Oh no, he spat it. Bastard. Yeah, got him. See if I can get this one up. Oh, he's only a little chop. Oh, look at the bait they're feeding on. There must be a school of pillies out there because he's just coughed up an absolute load of it. Come on, mate. There you go. Taylor on a Toby on Dawn. Doesn't get too much better than that. He's too small anyway. You can hit your rod on this wave. Ooh. Hope that worked out all right for him. Oh. 
Got hit then, and missed it. And then picked up weed. Got him. Didn't even. He hit that and come towards me. Oh, he looks like he might be a bit better size too. He might be legal. There you go. Down. Taylor, number three landed. Oh. Don't do that, mate. Don't do that. Stay calm. <sighs> Size is a little down. But there seems to be all right numbers. We're just sitting at the end of the edge of this wash. And because it's so high, it sucks. You don't really get your slug comes straight to the top pretty quickly. So you do have to free spill it down multiple times per cast. Whereas if you're on the beach, you just crank it all the way back in. Another one. Good if the swell wasn't up so much. I can get down a bit more. But you work with what the conditions are that you have on the day. That was a big one. That was a big one. Well, I'm gonna have a couple more casts here. Oh yeah, the Grommies are on. A couple more casts here, then I'm gonna uh, change spots. Oh, there's tuna busting out up there. Oh, epic. Got him. Oh. See you, mate. 
slug change. Drop down to a 20 gram knot. See if they're feeding on a bit smaller bait. I could see them in the waves before. So they're there. I only caught choppers so far, so hopefully there's a few bigger guys around. Well, sneaky spot change again. I wanted to stand on those rocks, but the swell's too big. So, I'll stand here. Still a nice wash zone there. Back to the spoon. Let's see if anyone's home. Got it. Hopefully this is a bit better size one. It's not doing a great deal yet. There he is. Try to keep his head down a bit so he doesn't jump. Oh. Oh, he, actually he doesn't look too bad. And there's the keeper. You beauty. Thought there'd be one there. And there you go, there's the Abu Toby spoon. Perfect hookup. Bottom jaw there. How good is that? It looked good. Knew there'd be one around there somewhere. We found him. Hopefully a few of his mates are still there. Now it's very important if you are going to keep a feed of tailor, treat them with a bit of respect, they've got to be bled. And brain spiked as well. That just ensures good eating. Just want to get down and give them a rinse without getting washed off here. Now the spoons, you don't have to work as fast as a slug. You can get them going pretty, fairly quick, but if you go too quick, they'll blow out, so. Just a medium place to retrieve. On a spinning reel, that still gets them moving pretty quick. And because they flash around so much. Oh, got him. Yes. He hit that twice. Oh, this one doesn't feel too bad. Oh, waves. Oh, another nice chopper. <clears throat> He's another good one too. Few ripper. He had two goes at that too. Absolutely belted it. He came back a second time and got it properly. Right on the edge of the wash again. He's a good fish, a bit bigger than the last one. How good is that? Another one for T. I think that was first cast back too. In he goes. Wish there's a nice big rock pool up here. Hands are getting a bit greasy. A bit of luck there's a bit of a school in here now. That's two and two casts. Both nice fish, better than we're getting around the other side, so it's always a good start. Now if there is sand bottom, you can let these things sink right down, that's the best way to do it. And start your retrieve from there.
If you do get it to the surface too quick, stop at mid-retrieve, free spill it, and go again. Oh, school of them out the back there. So there's either Dart or Taylor, one of the two. Oh, there's a school or something in there. Oh, there's a big school of Taylor there. It's either a school of Taylor or a school of mullet. They just are in that wave. Hopefully they're a school of Taylor. That'd be sick. Might even try a popper here soon. A lot of commotion. A lot of white water. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a trevally or something here too. Just gonna spray my casts around. You never really know where they're sitting. Obviously you've got an area that's concentrating bait then they're going to be close to there but a situation like this where there's a lot of wash you just want to keep fanning your cast around until you get some sort of pattern both those fish came just at the edge of this wash here so oh and that was a hit Might be a school of dart in the waves there. Yeah, it is, they're dart. Might even downsize to a little um, stick bait to see if I can get into some dart. Give the tailor a bit longer. There was tailor there. Little change of lure, going for a, uh, a sinking minnow, casting minnow. That's the mustard fast hatch clips, got a swivel on the front. Really need it for those spoons, they do twist up your line a bit. But that's the minnow there. I'm just going to twitch that through the wash and see if we can't get a couple of hookups that way. Maybe pull a bit better fish. Just got to watch these rocks in front of me. Yeah, these casting minnows you can pretty well cast as far as a slug they weigh a fair bit but they got that bib so you can just keep them in the, in the water But they are susceptible to weed. They got a really erratic action in the water too. So for pelagic species. Pretty well exactly what you want. Well I might have to put the spoon back on. Just talk up the casting minnow that much. No good. I have caught plenty of tail on it. Mm. I wouldn't lie to you. Or would I? That's it. Where's the spoon? Going back to the Toby. Got him. Two cracks at it again. Oh. Having a bit of a go. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Oh no. He just put on a show. He's not that. I don't think he's legal. No. Nah. 
He's a small... I had a good go at the start though. Tell you what. If there was dew around, that'd be slurping down Taylor that size. It's a jelly bean for him. Absolute jelly bean. They're all hitting me just in this wash area here so far. I hit, had hit the cast before and uh, got that fish then, but right on the edge. Whereas before there was a wash line out the back and they were sitting in that. So they really are just sitting wherever there's white water, they're sitting in there. So I'll get this one to the edge again and free spill it down. There. You just have to be careful. If it looks rocky, probably don't free spill it down because you'll end up lureless. Oh, there he is. <laughs> right on that wash, oh no, I pulled out. Right on that wash line again. They must just be sitting, they're sitting down dip deeper because when I s skip one over, nothing happens. But you let it sink down. I might just cast there from the start. When you let it sink down, it's game on. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Got him. Got him. Oh. Go, you good thing. Got a better one or we fouled him? Might have fouled this one. Spiral Taylor. Oh, he's a... No, he's a keeper as well. There you go, he's had a slash at it. Missed. And, uh... Copped it in the... In the gills, but he will... He's a not a bad fish either. There you go. Not bad fish. Again, they're all in that chopper class. But, um, for what I've got planned for them, they're going to be absolutely perfect. Enjoying his mates. I'm only half casting now because I know where they're sitting. They're sitting right on that edge. No point casting past them if you're only going to get the hit at your feet so chuck it there and hopefully I'm not going to make a liar out of myself right now oh hit there we go this one's tiny Come on, mate. Come on. Tiny. But there is a few bigger boys in there, so... Keep sending that lure back. Oh, no. Oh, that's lucky. Oh. oh. How's that? Almost got a snag and what have I done here? Classic bag, is it? And that is why you don't put your rubbish in the ocean. Come on guys, it's not that hard. Take that with me. Got him. Don't 
that one hit it out a bit wider. It must be moving around. There's got to be a school of bait in here somewhere because these fish are just holding in this wash. This guy's only a small eeling. Food on me. Thanks, mate. I think I got him he's running towards me. Either that or he's tiny. I think he might be a small tacker. Yeah. He's doing the chopper jump. You can spit that lure now. Where are the big boys at? Out the back. Oh, spat it. Got him. Wait here. Hasn't really done much though. Oh. There you go. Self release. Yeah, got him. Got him. Oh no, that wash looks prime now. There's got to be a fish in there. Come on. Come on. Free spool. Get it back down in the zone. Oh. That was a promise of look. One time I don't get a hit. Got him. Getting close to keeper territory. Yeah, he got.
Got him. First hit in a little while. There's another sideways chopper, I think. Little slash and dash. Oh no, calm down, mate. Well, guys, that's the four Taylor I kept there. Um, the ones I kept are about 37, 38 centimetres. I wish I had kept my ruler. I probably could have kept a few more. I was chasing a few of them because I want to load up the smoker and get a heap done. But, um, oh well. You get that on the big jobs. But yeah, I'm gonna knock the fillets off these, and then uh, I might show you how I smoke them up. Right, guys, that's the filleting taken care of, and a mighty fine job, even if I say so myself. Got eight beautiful fillets there. I've even taken the row out. Quite small rows on two of them, but um, I haven't tried smoking them before. Apparently it's really nice. I'm gonna give it a red hot crack. Um, I've made up my brine. Now, I do have my smoking tutorial video it's in my category or list of videos down there somewhere. So if you do want to find out what's in the brine and all the uh, measurements, check that out. Uh, quickly, there's brown sugar, salt, peppercorns, uh, lemon, soy sauce, and water. Um, you can check out the whole video. I'll go through it step by step. I'm going to let these fillets sit in there for 24 hours, maybe a bit longer. If you can leave them in there for 36 hours, even better. Uh, it just helps keep the flavour and um, it does them a world of good, stops them from drying out in the smoker as well. I don't know how the wizardry works, but it does, trust me, it makes a massive difference. But, oh, and make sure you leave that brine in the fridge, you don't want to leave it on the bench, that's, uh, that's going to give you something very, very nasty if you did that. And uh, yeah, after they go in the smoker, so just make sure they're all covered, that's also another key step. If they're not all covered, then they're not going to soak. I don't know if you can see that without me tipping it all out. That's what it looks like there. Chuck my lemon wedges on top. And I'll chuck my row in. Now my old man loves eating the row. He crumbs them up and eat them. I can't say, oh, I think I've given it a try once. I haven't tried it recently. So I think I'm gonna have to give it a crack. I know in many cultures they go absolutely nuts for it. So it can't be too bad. Uh, and smoked apparently is fantastic. So. I'm going to get these guys back in the fridge and I'll catch up with you tomorrow and fire up the smoker. Now I forgot to mention, I, you would have probably seen it uh, if you didn't and you didn't pick up on it. I've taken the pin bones out of the fillets too. So that's the little V that you saw in the fillets. Uh, take them out because they're hard to deal with when you're pulling the fish apart after. Uh, and particularly if you don't know the anatomy of a fish, if you're pulling a fillet apart, put it on some crackers or something like that when it's nice and smoked and all good, uh, there's a fair chance you'll end up with a bone in it. So do everyone a favour. And take them out first. Now, if you're going fishing anytime soon, which may or may not be happening given the uh, current climate we've got going on, these are fantastic brim bait. Um, you can easy, even use the long strips for flathead and that sort of stuff. They've got lots of action. If you use them whole on a, like a little two gang or something like that, really good bait, good flesh bait. And those tailor heads, well, they haven't gone to waste either. They've made their way into a cryovac bag. They'll be going into the freezer. And uh, if they happen to end up on a tenno getting cast off the beach for something big and silver, then so be it. Really, really good bait. Uh, just got to make sure you've got the gear to cast them with. But yeah, if you can store them in your freezer, well worth keeping and having on hand for that off chance you uh, head down the beach in search of something big. And that's the fish. That's after a day and a half in the brine. It's ready to go in the smoker. Got the other half loaded up as well. Gonna smoke it for about three hours about 100 degrees. There you go. There it goes. Now for wood, I'm using chunks of banks here. I found that really good for smoking fish. And chuck a couple in there. I'll also chuck in a few banks here cones because they start smoking a lot quicker than the wood. So get that instant, instant smoke going. That should do it. Right, smoke, smoke away my precious. Now like I said, I'm gonna try and keep that about 100, 110 degrees for about three hours and that should uh, 
should be just about perfect. It's not too hot so it doesn't cook it too quickly, but it's not too cold that it doesn't cook it at all. So, right on. Well guys, the time is up and have a look at that. I don't know how it actually looks on camera with a head torch on it, but it looks and smells pretty good to me. I chucked a couple of sausages in there. I figured if I had the smoker on, why not? Ooh. Well, that's the uh, the row. I probably took it a bit too far. I'm not gonna lie, definitely forgot about it. And um, look, it could have probably done with about two hours less. But <laughs> Oh well, them's the brakes. Let's get it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that color. That's unreal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, have a look at that. That is a tray full of excellence. The humble old tailor, I'll tell you what, it's good fresh, but damn, it is mighty fine smoked. Now, I can't do the uh, the old taste test right now because it's a bit late at night. It's about 11.30 now, and I've already brushed my teeth. I'm ready for bed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a container, put it in the fridge, and get stuck into it tomorrow. So I'll catch you all then. Sweet dreams. But I am excited. Tell you what, it smells damn good. Even if it tastes bad, I reckon, the smell of that... Is, uh, is worth having itself. Well, legends, this is my favorite part. Time to test the produce. It's also time to crack a beer. So if you're having a beer, while you're watching this, cheers to you guys. If you're not, cheers anyway. Oh, yes. Beers in summer, or autumn there. How good, how good. Righto. So, our smoke tailor. You see the skin there? Probably don't want to eat that. So. Peel that off, it should just peel right away. And then I'm going for your classic smoked fish on crackers. So I've got a original club cheddar vintage. It's sharp and crumbly, this guy here. And I've found that style of cheese really complements the smoked fish. Put yourself a little, uh, little piece on there. And then Break off some fish. Look at that. See, you can see that the color on that means there's a lot of smoke flavor in there. Oh, 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 oh. oh yes. Already know how it's gonna taste. I had a sneaky taste before. Eh, let's not kid ourselves. I've definitely had a taste before. It is red hot. Have a go at that. Cheese crackers and Freshly smoked, freshly caught fish. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. You will never, and I mean it, never, buy smoked fish of any description from a shop ever again. Give that a try, I guarantee you will not look back. It is, out of 10, probably a 17. It is so good. I've got people who don't eat fresh fish that eat this stuff by the bucket load. You put it out, cheese crackers, stir it through a pasta, you can, you can put it in an omelet, you can do anything with it, but it is so, so good. Um, yeah, look, Particularly with the oily fishes like mackerel, you got your tailor. I have heard tuna's good, I've never tried it. Uh, kingfish is great. All those sort of oilier, uh, more pelagic fish seem to be better. I've never tried smoking a snapper. I'm sure it's great, but I've just never tried it. Um, but the oilier fish really seem to, to go great guns. Um, I don't really wanna talk anymore. I just wanna get stuck into more of these. And actually, no, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll go through the uh, the gear stuff in a second, but um, I'm going to polish this off. Guys, you've got to give it a try. I know I say that about all my recipes. I'm definitely not a chef, but I know what tastes good, and that is one of them. Cheers, guys. Hope you uh, give that a crack sometime. And that is why I love smoking Taylor. How good did that look? Now, I did promise you I'd go through my gear, so I'm going to do that now. One of the reasons I love spinning for Taylor is because it, it's so simple. You really don't need that much at all. So my outfit is a 5,000 twin power. That's loaded with 20 pound braid, uh, 20 pound power pro, and my rod of choice 
for off the rocks and spinning the beach is a 12 foot Savage Gear Salt. It's a six to 10 kilo two piece rod. Uh, it's in one piece at the moment because I'm inside. But these things, for the money, have got to be one of the best casting rods I've ever used. Uh, they are insane. They cast a stick bait and a slug better than just about anything I've used, and I think they're only about 160 bucks. I've got plenty of a lot more expensive rods that don't perform as well as this, and they've still got a bit of grunt down the butt. So if you do hook a big tail, hook a valley, or you need to lift something up the rocks, they are still red hot. And in terms of spinning reel, uh, you don't have to obviously get a twin power, but something with a high speed ratio, so uh, six point something plus um, to one is a lot better than something that's slower, just means you don't have to crank the handle as hard. Um, obviously using spoons like we were using, you don't have to wind them fast at all, but your standard slug or popper, you really do need to crank them pretty quick to get them working, so something that's nice and quick in the retrieve, very much worthwhile. Uh, leader wise, oh, I was using 30 pound leader. Uh, you can go up or down depending on where you're fishing. If you're fishing the beach, you could probably get away with 20. Uh, you just got to keep in mind that the tail have really sharp teeth, so if you're using a small slug, there's a chance they might go over the back of them. Now, when it comes to rigging, obviously you saw the lure I was using, Abu Tobi. Um, I use a whole heap of other lures as well. I use twisties, I use stick baits, the Zerik Zaplin, the 115s, absolutely awesome. Um, and skipping poppers as well work a treat. Um, so I go my braid, I usually use either an FG or a Slim Beauty knot to connect my leader. And then I go to one of these guys, that is a mustard fast hatch. These are the ones with the ball bearing swivel. Now I either use the ones with the ball bearing swivel or just the fast hatch clip. If I'm gonna use something that spins around a lot, then I'll use one with the, uh, with the swivel. If I'm gonna use like a stick bait or a popper, then I'll just use a straight fast hatch clip. They, uh, they really do make changing lure really easy. Um, I, when I'm fishing for tail, I change lures a lot. I'll keep on swapping and changing. As conditions change, and as you try and find out what the fish are doing in the day, I'm always changing lures and trying something different. So being able to do that quickly and efficiently without cutting into your leader and tying your knots, it's always gonna be a positive. But guys, that is all I've got time for this week. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did like or learn something, make sure you leave us a comment below, smash that like button. Now, particularly the older guys, if you've ever used an Abu Tobi like I did today, one of these guys, let me know in the comments below. I wanna know what you caught and what you were fishing for. Uh, they're a pretty versatile little lure. I think I'll be using, using it a bit more this season. Hopefully we can get out and, uh, and chase a few, Taylor. I don't know what's going on with the uh, whole corona thing at the moment, but hey, hopefully fishing remains open in Queensland. And, uh, and New South Wales and we can get out and do a few more sessions. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. There's new fishing action coming every single week. Uh, I do have a stockpile of videos ready to go in case we do get locked down. So fear not people, we're, we're a ride as rain for, for a little bit. If you do want to support the channel, make sure you check out my website, sammyhitskyfishing.com. I do only have the navy hats left. There's even less than there was last week. Uh, so they're going into very limited supply. So if you do want one, make sure you grab it quickly. Uh, and I'll get that in the post to you ASAP. Until next time, guys, hope you're well, hope you're all safe, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Cheers.